here, I'll just latch on to Athletics Press, Social Press Road Media, and that's good enough to send out you know, a couple pictures, a couple of pictures from this one. <coughs> I should. Yeah, her mom had a doctor's appointment. So she's sitting there set up for a while. Mm. All right. Things started here. Bright lights. <laughs> <laughs> Make a way around. Mic check one, two, three, four. This is a woman talking. <laughs> Not a man. Congested. <laughs> Good radio voice. Like yeah. I have a deep voice. So, like, I, you know you have a deep voice when you call like the airlines. Mm. And they're like, sir, I'm like, no, this is a woman. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes I don't even correct them. Or sometimes I get mad and I start calling the person the opposite sex. I'm like, no, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm like, take that. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get started here. Coach Barnes, we'll start off with you and we'll take it over to Harry after that. Um, today is a good day. Um, actually, you know, this has been kind of work in progress for a while, but there, there's a lot of hoops you have to go through because, um, you know, Harry played with a couple of the players. But super excited to welcome Harry back with open arms. I think. This is great for Tucson, great for U of A. I think a great platform for Ari. Um, she'll be playing pro in the summer, and then in, the, in our season, she'll be coaching with us and, and coaching, learning, and her title is director of recruiting. So um, I, don't, I don't think I know of a better recruiter than Ari. Um, and even for players, that they're really excited because they can learn from her. You know, it's one thing having a coach tell you, about 20 years ago we did this in the pros, but there's another thing that Aerie's actually doing it, and they can follow her all summer, so it's a great asset for the program, and I'm really, really excited we were able to do it. Yeah, um, I'm excited to be back uh, in the place where I call my second home. Uh, I just want to thank Coach Barnes, uh, Coach Heehee, and just the whole athletic department for giving me a chance and letting me come back and at my alma mater. Yep. So I've had that idea for a while, um, but it's something I wasn't going to approach her and talk about while she's um, playing. I knew she's not an overseas type person, but she did her first year, and I was like, okay, maybe she'll stick it out because I was not the overseas type person, but then you kind of start making a lot of money, then you, then you become an overseas person. Um, so at first, I kind of brought it up to her, and I was waiting, and, and then she was interested, but I kind of like said, no, you need to wait, because I thought she was going to be interested and get this big contract from overseas, and all of a sudden, no. So I wasn't, well, I wasn't sure if it actually um, come to fruition. I think that, um, you know, she, but she decided she didn't want to go overseas anymore, especially all the stuff that's going on in the world right now. Um, she didn't feel like that was the right thing. So when I saw her get more serious about not wanting to go and getting those offers and rejecting them, um, then I thought, like, I'm going to go after her for sure. And then we had the opening. Um, but I would have I would have tried to create something for her to be here. So I think this is a good start for her to learn what it's like to coach, to make sure this is something she wants to do, and just to learn like recruiting and different things and, and just grow. And then hopefully then when she retires in 10 years or something, she'll want to walk into coaching. I think that's my plan like long term for her. Um, and she'll see if she loves it. She may like that. She may like the role of director of recruiting. She may like some other facet. But I think it's a great career for women. and. Um, for someone like her, she could really flourish in her career. So during the time that she's gone, when I talked to Beth, she said she was doing some of that work around recruiting. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the plan? Or what is the plan for when Aries? So when she's gone, she'll be focused on the WNBA. Um, you know, there's a lot of different rules and uh, guidelines that we had to be really strict and have a plan for. So um, she'll be focused on the WNBA. She, well, obviously, you know, she's she could do the same thing she always did, even as an alma mater while she's gone. But she won't be um, doing much with us while she's gone, just because of you know she needs to focus on the WNBA. That's her main job. Um, but you know, th while she's here, those, she'll have a contract while she's here. 
and she'll be focused on Arizona. And I think the great thing for her also, I think this will be helpful, is she can work out here with us. Um, she can't work out with the team, but she can work out, train. She has all the facilities here, and has a relationship with Jaime and everybody and all of us. And she'll be able to get in shape and kind of maintain and get better in the off season for her off season. But from your, your viewpoint, uh -huh. how will you handle those um, responsibilities? Oh, um, well, I think that, you know, Beth's really experienced in recruiting Ashley Aaron. So I think the only, if you think about summer, it's a slower time. The only busy time is recruiting. So in her role, she wouldn't go beyond the road recruiting anyways. So I think that for her, um, you know, possibly making some phone calls and just limited things. So the really the only thing that we be missing is actually being in the office. So that wasn't, um, I think as a coach, it's more challenging because coaches were on the road all July, or not all of July, but for weekends in July. So she would have missed that as a player. But some, some people have coached and done it. So in this role, it's not going to be um, missing as much. So. Carrie, when uh, Coach Barnes approached you with the idea, what was your first reaction to it? It sounded like a good idea. Um, I just, at the time, I wasn't sure on what I want to do. If I want to go pro again or if I wanted to stay in Atlanta again for another off season just to work out. Um, but after just giving much thought, I just thought it would be a good idea to come back here, help Coach Barnes out, and just honestly kind of be a mentor to the players right now and just try to expand my game as well, but just learn actually like what they do behind the scenes, like the coaches and stuff like that. And she's already been the first week. She was like, wow, I didn't know you guys go through all this. <laughs> I have a new appreciation. I was like, uh-huh. Because coaching is like, I mean, like probably 40% of it. Just all the organization, like the, you know, managing different um, things that come up every day and just the preparation. And, and I, like, I was like, girl, this is off season. But I think it's good for her to see it and learn and um, just, I think, grow. You, she'll, she'll grow in her game. I think she'll grow in her development as a point guard. All those things because we're going to be teaching it and then she's going to understand it better. So I think it's going to help her game a lot. How much did that influence you? Yeah, uh, this past year, it was it went really well for me. Um, you know, obviously we didn't make it to playoffs, we missed it by a game, but I mean, definitely that's uh, making me hungrier for next season. Um, and I'm really excited to just get better and just try to, you know, learn from one of the best um, and just, I don't know, just try to be the best version of myself while I'm away from Atlanta, but I'm excited. I'm in a great position. I'm in great hands with great people. So, I mean, I'll obviously have a better year three. Well, and for her, I think it's also like what you don't realize when you're a WNBA player, if you don't go back to where your college is, it's really, you can find like a trainer, but you don't have so many resources. I think a huge advantage and we talked a lot about is like, she's here, she's got the weight room downstairs. She has nutritionists. Like, she has all these things that the athletes have where I think she can really grow. No, she won't be playing in games in Europe, but she can really pick certain things and she gets stronger, more fit. Like, it's all at her disposal. And I think that's a huge advantage. Um, you know, and just getting a, eating right, like all those things. Like, she's got nutritionists here. And, 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 you know, when you're a pro, you pay for all that. So here it's like, you know, it's right here. You don't have to pay for it. And so I think, um, it's, I think it's going to be, it's going to help her a lot. Ooh. I'm excited to talk to the young players. Um, I can relate to them in so many ways. Uh, I've been in their shoes, and they want to be in my shoes in the future. So, I mean, like Adia said, um, there's no better recruiter. And I played my career here, and so I've done great things under Coach Barnes. And I think that I could really, you know, sell to school and, you know, have kids commit to Coach Barnes and the program. So. I'm really excited, and also I'm not much of a talker, so I mean I think that helped me step out of my comfort zone and talk to, you know, high school players, and also just talk to the girls as well on the team. And she'll be talking to donors, doing a lot. So <laughs> but these are areas like I think it's all about growing, and getting better. And so like if she can grow in some way, she just becomes more, just better overall. And I think that those are areas she can, and that, and that will carry over to being a point guard in the WNBA because you have to communicate, you have to um, be in uncomfortable situations. That's when you grow. So I think all of these things will help her, and I think it's gonna she'll see a really big difference, and she's gonna help us. Um, the players, it's one thing me saying it from 20 years ago. I didn't even know I played and never watched me play. 
um, and it's deaf ears. Like your coach says it all the time, like, uh, you know, but when, then when someone's doing it that you're watching and you relate to and that you, you followed and you love as a player, she's saying it, it hits home a lot harder. And I know that, because even as a player, it's like your mom telling you something all the time, you're like, eh. And later on, you're like, wow, I do that. It's just like my mom. I should have listened to my mom. I think it's the same thing. So I think that's one area where she can really help. I, like, think about it. Every player, you, every pro player turn, like, looks back. It's besides probably Kelsey Plum or something. And so she probably even says the same thing, says, I should have worked harder. I should have done this. Oh, it's so much harder in the pros, but she's, just, she's doing it now. So I think that it's going to inspire them to give more and do more. And, and what does that look like? She can say, hey, this is my hardest thing in the pros. When she's saying that to Kaylin Gilbert or to Paris or Maya, they're going to listen a lot more than like me saying it. Um, and that's just a fact. And um, then they can follow her in the summer. They can see her apply the things she worked on all year. So there is tremendous value to that. There really is. What was the reaction from you know those incoming freshmen learning that Harry's going to be a part of the program? I was so excited. Um, I was just excited, like, wow, really? You know, it was kind of like, are you? And then I think the first thing was, can she work out? I was like, no, she can't work out here. Sorry, because you don't want to play defense on you anyways. <laughs> Uh, but no, but I think just like it was kind of like, wow, really? And I, it was even huge for our 23 commitments, uh, the, the players that have committed. It's like, wow, you know, she's really there. Like they're excited to come in and learn from her and they're fans of hers and they've watched her. And so I think, um, I think everybody was just really, really happy. How much do you think you've already grown in communication? I mean, with what did you grow and change? How much from your viewpoint did you? I've grown a lot, especially just looking back off my second year. Uh, I got very comfortable with my teammates. And uh, just Coach Barnes been preaching to me for years, like, you need to, like, step out your shell. And then also just Coach Nisa always saying, just uh, as a playing guard, you have to demand respect from your teammates. Mm -hmm. And so that made me, like, want to talk even more, especially just being the point guard and extension of the coach on the floor. So I think I've made my strides, but I'm not where I want to be. Yeah, uh, I think on my first day I came, Kate was like, what are you doing here? And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to tell anybody just yet, but I was just like, oh, like, I'm, I'm just visiting. I'm here for a little bit. And she's like, oh, okay. And then when it came out, she was like, you're really here, eh? And I was like, yeah. So Kate's excited to have me back as well. Yeah, they're all excited. Yeah, she's a teammate. And I think, and like, that's, she's been a couple years removed. So I think it's a little easier. I think it's hard when you first are removed, like, they're your friends, and I think now she's been in the pros. She's kind of lived the grown life for a little bit, the real world. And then to come back, I think it's a it's a little different perspective. So I think it's better that it wasn't her first year after. It's like she's kind of been there. She was able to try overseas. Like I I would have pushed her overseas because you have to try it because you don't know what you don't know and you don't know until you do it. She tried it, did not like it. Um, but it's not, it, it's, it's also, but I do know if she would have stuck it out longer, she probably would have liked it. But she's a homebody. She doesn't want to stay that far away. And some people just are kind of like that. And I think the great thing about the WNBA now, there's more opportunities here. But I think this is a real job and a skill. And I think that one of the things that helped me as a, as a player, like I wasn't just WNBA. I was like WNBA overseas, but then I was broadcasting. And that helped me like have opportunities to walk into it when you're done. Because think about when she's done playing. She'll be like 30 years old, and most players haven't done anything else. So let's say she plays until she's 32, which is very realistic. Like when you're done, if you've only done basketball and you've only played overseas, you don't really have other skills. Good and bad, you have like a lot of lessons from basketball, but it's good when you can like hone another skill and then walk into something after. And I think that really helped me. I, w I wouldn't have this job so fast after I was retired if I wouldn't have been doing those things. So I think she can like have a segue into a coaching career, and it's a really good career. And we need more players and, and more players in it, more women in it, and uh, more like like successful professional players. Because a lot of us go into coaching and we're we're not successful. Like there's very few. I mean, think about the history Don and I made. I was like shocked that that was history. I was like, wow, there isn't a lot more. There just isn't a lot of us that go into coaching to have success. It's hard, and it's it's not. It's about the situation, and um, there's so many factors. So I think she can like learn and do it, and I think it'd be great for her. Oh. Anything else? All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Were you guys surprised? <laughs>